Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today we are playing Pokemon Climate, the game where you play as a new Pokemon professor. Let's get into it. Starting things off, you are greeted by Bart, the head weather institute professor who basically is going to send you off to research different weather conditions in different parts of the world. This is you right here, really love the sprite. And then after that, we take the boat to this new location and we get off the boat and you can see we have a cast form as our Pokemon. Because we're part of the Weather Institute, they are giving cast forms out like it's going out of fashion. And also cast form has been given a bit of a boost in terms of stats and stuff in this game because usually cast form isn't that good. So anyway, after that, we get to the first town. I also find this fisherman here who gives me a fishing rod, which was really, really useful. I then make my way to the professor's laboratory. And here we have three Pokeballs on the table. He basically just says, oh, Bart told me you were coming. And then he gives me hail. He gives me sunny day. He gives me uh, he gives me rain dance. And he also gives me sandstorm as well. Basically, all the different weather conditions for cast form. And then we get to choose from between Ivysaur, we get to choose between War Turtle, and then we also get to choose between Charmeleon as well. All getting boost because of weather conditions, especially Ivysaur who's got Chlorophyll. I decided to go with Ivysaur just simply because Cast Form already has a fire move and a water move. So I just wanted a little bit more coverage, and so that is why I went for Ivysaur. Also has Chlorophyll as well, so with Sunny Day, doubles the speed stats, so that's really useful. Then go and pick up some items from the Pokemon, and we have to make way through the rainforest to the first town on the very left. Now, of course, every time you go to a new area, there is a new weather condition. So starting things off, it is all to do with rain. And so it's going to be Pokemon that are getting boosted by rain. So Pokemon with like Swiss Swim and water type Pokemon and stuff like that. Although we went up against Atropia straight off the bat, which wasn't great. So knowing that I needed a water type Pokemon to get a boost from the rain, I decided to go to the pond also changes the sprite for whatever reason and fish up a water type Pokemon. Because I had the fishing rod and not the good rod or the old rod or the super rod, I wasn't really too sure what I was going to fish up, but we do get ourselves a Poliwag, which isn't that bad. This also had Rain Dance as well, which was quite useful. And it's not a high level, only level 21, but it is what it is. Anyway, next up, we move back to the left and go through this rainforest. I find myself with a netball and we finally make our way to Torrent Town. So this is the first location, still raining. Honestly, the, the rain in this place, ridiculous. Didn't even and bring my wellies i go to the gym and the gym guy's like look gym leader's not here he's gone to the swamp if you want to fight the gym leader you're gonna have to go to the swamp and tell him to get back here so i have to go south of this new town to route three into the drizzle swamp still raining by the way the rain is ridiculous um and then we have to just basically battle all of these different uh, trainers and stuff i also come across a golbat as well and i didn't know this but golbat can w learn like a ton of different um weather condition moves like sunny day and stuff like that anyway we catch the pol we catch the golbat and then we go down and find a polytoad getting attacked by team sky we have this naked guy here who is apparently the gym leader and we basically have to stop them from taking over this polytoad and basically just capturing it from themselves so team sky is just a flying type evil team which is really really cool Leads with a Swablu, also has a Lickitung as well. I really like the fact that the Team Sky Mons also have Cloud9 as well, which stops weather conditions. So that's kind of useful against, well, obviously against us, which we're basically just only using weather type Pokemon. Anyway, we defeat those, we pick up Surf, and then I decide to teach Sunny Day to Ivysaur because I know that the gym leader is going to have a rain team setting up the rain. And so obviously Sunny Day will counter that and make their water type moves not do as much damage. So that's exactly what I do. I teach Ivysaur Sunny Day, and then I go to the gym. And this is basically like Doofa Gym, where you just have to battle all the trainers to get the light to shine brighter. And there are so many trainers in this gym as well. I generally think there's like 10 or 12 trainers in this gym, and they're all pretty difficult to beat as well. Like, this isn't an easy fan game at all. I'm just kind of leveling up Ivysaur now, though, because I know he's going to have a water type trainer he's gonna have water type pokemon and i also want to get to level 32 as well so i can get my venusaur now basically in the kind of description of this game you have your rain teams you have the fire teams and you also have the like the sandstorm teams so i thought ivysaur was going to be good for the rain team and sandstorm team which is another reason that i want to boost him up to level 32 and also he's going to get chlorophyll from the sun so ivysaur just seemed like a really good option anyway we finally make our way to the gym leader still not got any clothes on don't know how he's not getting hypothermia or something because this rain is just always on him um, I decide to heal my team up. I'm not going back to the Pokemon Center. I've got a couple of super potions. I also bought a few soda pops as well. You can buy them from the market, which is really useful. Heal up my Ivysaur. Heal up my Golbat. Wish I stayed in the game here, but I didn't. And then we take on the gym leader. He's basically saying, you know, glad you made it. Not many people get this far. And we then get into the battle. Unfortunately for me, 
His first Pokemon that he leads with is a Jinx. Now, this is terrible for me because obviously it's a psychic type Pokemon, Ivysaur's poison, Golbat's poison. So I go into Poliwag just to get a safe switch out. And uh, yeah, she obviously just destroys the Poliwag. She destroys my cast form. I come back in with Ivysaur. I set up the Sunny Day because basically this Pokemon has uh, dry skin or whatever. It basically boosts its um, HP in the rain, which is really annoying. I didn't even know that it got that move, uh, that ability. And then this kind of bug pops up and I'm a little bit worried. I'm like, hang on a minute, what's that? It then goes off and I'm like, okay, disaster averted. It powder snows me, kills the Ivysaur. And then I obviously have to come in with my Golbat. But it then pops up again like twice. And I'm like, oh no, this is really, really bad. And it basically just drowns out the sun. So I'm like, bro, what have they done to this game? It's just constantly like lagging and bugging and stuff. And basically I can't get off this screen. I'm just stuck on this screen here. And so I'm just, I'm just thinking to myself, mate, another fan game that's just broken. So I have to go all the way back to the swamp because I didn't save it. And again, this is before, before I've taken all the trainers out in the gym. And I was, I was just a bit annoyed at this stage, to be fair. Because obviously you have to save constantly with the fan games because there's always going to be bugs and stuff. But I don't know, I was just kind of kicking myself that I didn't save it right before the gym leader. Because that's just what you should do anyway. Anyway, I make my way back to the gym. Obviously, I have to take out all the trainers again. And at, at this point, I'm like, maybe the game's just broken. Like, maybe you just can't get past the first gym leader. I'm thinking that it's just simply because Jinx has, like, an ability that counteracts, like, the sun or something. Like, obviously, it gets healed in the rain, and maybe the game's just, like, breaking because of that. So I'm thinking in my head, maybe if I just get past the Jinx, we may be able to get past this bug. And luckily, we do get past it, obviously, because the video is a lot longer. But, yeah, this was really, really annoying. So obviously, as you can see, I just have to get through the gym. And, uh, yeah, like I say, the, the trainers, they're not messing around. They've got some decent mons, float swords with, like, Ice Fang and stuff like that. Obviously, with Swift Swim, really, really annoying to go up against. Anyway, we finally make our way back to the gym leader. Obviously, I'm saving the game this time. I'm not letting my uh, my game crash again. And, uh, yeah, he just does his normal spiel about, you know, can't believe you made it. No one ever gets this far. And then we're into the battle. So what I'm going to do this uh, this time is first turn. I'm not going to switch out. I'm just going to set the sun up. And then I'm going to go into cast form and weather ball. And it should kill because obviously it is in the uh, the sun. She then goes for the confusion. Obviously gets the confused, which is really, really annoying. But we do get the sunny day off with Ivysaur. Which of, of course means that the bug is going to come straight back into play. Which obviously is really, really annoying. But it lets you, until the sun goes, it lets you play. So I have to kill this Jinx before the sun goes. So I come back in with cast form. I obviously get the confusion. And then the bug happens. And then I go for the weather ball. I take out the Jinx as a one shot. Does a lot of damage. Like I say, cast form kind of busted in this. And the Jinx just takes a little bit of time to die. But then it dies. And I'm like, okay. Then the sun shines, and then there's no bug. So I think to myself, okay, Jinx is the problem. So fair play trying to make the gym difficult, but literally destroying your game and making it unplayable if you set up the sun, I don't think that's that fair. <laughs> I think that's kind of a little bit unfair on the player. But anyway, I'm just weatherballing now because we can just sweep the rest of his team. Obviously, the sunlight fades, which isn't great. Then he comes in with a Shenotic, which isn't great for me, obviously. I go into Poliwag just so I can heal a couple of my Pokemon up because we have taken a bit of damage. And this is like life or death right now. I have to win this fight because I don't want to, my game to be bugging out at all. So I have to make sure that I, I, I win this battle. And obviously, level 27 Shenotic, not great. Goes for the Mega Drain. Uh, Poliwag does drop there. Again, Poliwag... I mean, it was just there just because of rain dance and stuff, but I, I didn't really use it. It was really just death fodder. I decided to come in with Golbat because Poison Flying is like perfect for Shenotic. And I think I can pretty much take this thing out, even though it is a level above me. I go for a wing attack, and it does a nice cheeky half of the Shenotic's health. Goes for the Confuse Ray. We go for another wing attack, though, and we do take out the Shenotic. So now the Gym Leader's got one Pokemon left. I'm really, really hoping that it's not going to be something that sets up the rain and everything. But of course, it is that. And they do bring in a Pelipper, which isn't great for me because obviously it's good against Ivysaur. Cast Form's not got a lot of health left. It gets up the Drizzle. So first things first, I need to get rid of that rain. So I set up the Sunny Day. Sunlight turns harsh. It goes for the Haze for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why. I decide to go for a Growth just so I can do a little bit more damage to this thing. Get that Attack and Special Attack sharply raised. It goes for the Wing Attack. It does a hefty amount. Sends me down to 46 HP. But now I can just go for a Grass Pledge. And this does a decent amount because of the Growth Boost. Goes for the Water Pulse. I'm a little bit worried about Confusion here. Doesn't get it. And then I can Grass Pledge one more time. And I do take out the Gym Leader's final Pokemon. And now I'm level 31 as well. Trying to learn Double Edge. I decide to learn it just instead of Takedown. Because Takedown's just a worse version of Double Edge. 
And uh, yeah, just so, so happy, so, so happy to be out of this gym battle, just simply because of that bug there where I had to just redo a lot of stuff. And so from this point on, I was just saving the game left, right and center. Anyway, after that, I make my way back to the original town and start heading right because this is the next destination we need to go to. And uh, it is also like the sunny kind of side of things. So now we actually have to um, basically deal with like a bunch of fire types and a bunch of grass types getting boosted from like chlorophyll and stuff. I do go down just to see if the, the, like there is anything down there because I couldn't remember if I came from the, the south and obviously I did. So anyway, after that, we go back to the right to Route 4. And we obviously have Surf now as well because we did find it and we now can use Surf because of the, the Torrent Badge that we just got. And that's exactly what I do. I can just start Surfing now. There's another reason I got Poliwag. I'm going to need a decent water type though in this uh, next gym just simply because it is a Sun Team gym. So I'm going to need a Pokemon that can set up the rain. But it's a little bit annoying because obviously the Fire types get boosted and then so do Grass types with like Chlorophyll, which isn't great for a water type. So it, it kind of puts you in a bad position. But anyway, I do get Ivysaur up to level 32. And now it is going to evolve into a Venusaur. It's another reason that I kind of went Ivysaur over Venusaur. It just evolves quicker. It's just nicer to have a third stage Pokemon on your team before the other two. Like 36 is obviously a little bit higher to get to on a fan game. Like 32 is just a lot better. So I get my Venusaur. Venusaur also wants to start learning Petal Dance, which I'm absolutely fine with. I decided to get rid of Double Edge. Like, I've obviously got Grass Pledge, which is a really good move, but Petal Dance just gives you that extra bit of spice. It does cause confusion as well, which is a bit annoying, but Double Edge is just doing self-damage to myself anyway, so don't really have to be dealing with that. So I do learn Petal Dance on my Venusaur, and now our team's looking pretty good. I also like the following Pokemon aspect of this game as well. I think it's really cool. So I decided to switch back into Cast Form because I need to get some more XP on Cast Form. I then run into a Sandy Ghast on the beach, and I feel like a Ground type is going to be quite useful in against like a Sun Team. I know the Grass types are going to have their way with it, but for those those fire types it's not too bad i've not really got anything for fire types at the moment so it's gonna be quite useful to have uh, that so i do catch my sandy gas i also come across a wingle as well which i decide to catch it doesn't have drizzle but wingle does evolve at level 25 so after one more level i will have a pelipper and pelipper is obviously going to be really useful because it's good against the fire types and then it's also good against the grass types as well being a water flying type pokemon so it's literally the perfect pokemon for a fire type gym also learns rain dance as well so literally the perfect pokemon i decided to teach it rain dance as well and uh, i feel like now if i just get my pelipper up a few levels we should be okay for the gym and that's exactly what I do. I just start leveling it up because, like I say, it's one of the better options to have. So I just teach it Rain Dance there. No problem at all. And we have to keep making our way right until we get to the next town. And uh, again, there's, there's literally just trainers everywhere. They just put trainers all over the shop. But we finally make our way to Sunlit Town. And as you can see, it's bloody hot here. You're going to get to town here in two minutes. But I get a dire hit. And then there's already someone in front of the gym. And I'm like, bro, you got to do a little quest every single time you get to a new town, I swear. So I go up to him saying the gym is undergoing maintenance suggest me to go to Mount Furnace, the volcano, um, and that's after like after that the, the gym should be open. So that's what I have to do. I have to go up to the volcano. And again, as you can expect, there's a load of ground and rock types in here, which is perfect for Wingle. There's like gravelers all over the place, so I can just water pulse all of those. Wingle starts evolving into Pelipper. Again, doesn't have Drizzle, which isn't great, but I, I do have Rain Dance. It's not the worst thing in the world. And also, I just heal myself in the rain as well, so I, I do kind of like it. So uh, yeah, Pelipper now level 26. I just have to get it up some more levels, really. That's that's all I really have to do. And as you can see, the, the amount of Pokemon you find in this cave, like level 28 Gravelers is just perfect for me because I can just one-shot them and they give you a decent chunk of XP as well. So that's just kind of what I do. I just grind up on all the different Pokemon. And then we make our way to the top of the Volcano and who, like, bloody Team Sky, all up on my business again. Can't believe it. So I decide to heal up my Pelipper and start taking on these grunts. There's more Team Sky members this time and then there's a big double battle at the end as well. Um, which again we'll get into when we get to that part but uh, yeah just sends out the Swablus and the Lickitungs again they both have Cloud9 just to stop all the weather conditions which again really really cool um, aspect of this game that I really liked anyway we'll make our way to the top of the volcano and lo and behold two trainers that we have to double battle here we haven't got the gym leader to help us this time so we have to take them on two on two and i'm a little bit worried about this battle i'm like okay this this might be a little bit difficult leads with the psyduck and the swablu both have cloud nine uh, which is no problem for me really because i'm not setting up anything with drizzle and stuff and now i can rain dance and everything after so i decided to just go for a weather ball 
and it does, you know, okay damage. I would have preferred for the Rain Dance to be up first because it would have done a lot more. And plus, he got the boost from the Water Pulse. It didn't do a ton. Then he goes for the Aerial Ace as well. And then after that, I just decide to start hitting hard because that's all I can really do. So I go for a Wing Attack. I probably just should have gone for a Water Pulse, to be fair. But I was expecting the uh, the Weather Ball to kill the Swablu. It didn't. But the Wing Attack does. No problem there. Get a little bit of XP and then transform. I don't know why I didn't transform straight away, but... It is, it is what it is. So the Psyduck starts Fury Swipe in my cast form. Not happy about that in the slightest. I'm a little bit worried that they're going to send out like a really strong Pokemon as well because there could be some decent Mons in the back. Sends out the Lickitung. Like I say, all of these Mons have Cloud9. And so at this point, I'm like, I can just kill this Lickitung and I can just make it a one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, I, I don't know why I went for Water Gun here as well. I, I, I should have just gone for a uh, Weather Ball. It's just better anyway. But uh, then we go for the Water Pulse, goes for the Zen Headbutt on me, which is fine. Then goes for the Thunder Punch. I'm very happy that it didn't go for that on the Pelipper, otherwise it definitely would have died. So I go for a Water Pulse again, and then I go for another Water Gun. Again, I should just be Weather Balling. Don't know why I'm not doing it. Get the Water Pulse off, and we get a big fat crit on the Lickitung, which was very, very nice. I, I didn't really get many crits in this game. But uh, it was nice to finally get one then, and, and I do take out the Lickitung. So now it's just basically a 2v1. Not a battle that I'm really going to lose. That's what I love doing in double battles. I just like making it a two-on-one. So just some people like taking them both out at the same time. I just like getting on one. And then just it just makes the battle so much easier. Does go for the water pool. So it gets the confusion on my cast form. And then hit myself, which isn't great. Um, I do have an Ivysaur in the back as well, which I was just thinking at this point. I'm like, why have I not brought my Ivysaur in? I'm literally fighting a water type. That's that's just the best thing to do. And that's exactly what I do. I get rid of cast form. It's only got 13 HP. It's on its last legs. Bring in the Venusaur. And then I go for the wing attack. And it nearly kills again. Would have liked to crit there. Goes for the water pulse on my Venusaur. I'm just thinking the worst here that I'm going to get confused again. Because that's just all all that happens to me. Um, and then after that, I just uh, start taking out the, uh, the the Psyduck. No problems there. Petal Dance. I'm just locking myself into it. No problem whatsoever. And then the Psyduck dies. I get a nice level on Pelipper. Get a little bit of XP for everybody else. Next up though, they do bring in the Drompa. Which is a little bit annoying. Another Pokemon with Cloud9 it is Dragon Normal type. So I think because I've got nothing on my team that can really do much to it. I decided to just hit it full on with as much power as I can. I get confused due to the fatigue of Petal Dance. Which... Not great. It goes for the Dragon Breath, which obviously does crit me, because why wouldn't it? Just absolutely annihilates my Pelipper, which I wasn't a fan of at all. So I then go into Cast Form. I do have the uh, an Ice-type move, Powder Snow, which, again, isn't going to do a ton, but uh, it is just nice to have it. Nearly kills it. Get the Freeze, which I was very happy about. I was like, bloody hell. And then Venusaur does finish it off with a Petal Dance. So there goes the, uh, the two Team Sky members. Again, a tough battle. They do have some things in the back that... You don't really have anything for, but uh, we do take them out. And then uh, after that, they, they just go on about the fact that we beat them again. And then they drop the TM for Rock Smash. So I grab Rock Smash because I feel like I'm probably going to need that later on in the game in the Sandstorm kind of part of the game. And again, I, I think this game is literally just three different areas. But uh, anyway, I make my way back to the gym. This gym's really cool. Like, you can see the inspiration of taken from other gyms. Like, the first one with, uh, was Brawly's gym. And then this one is Lieutenant Surge's gym, where it's got, like, two kind of force fields you have to get past. But this time, instead of the electric barriers being controlled by, like, the, the bins, you actually have to go up to the different trainers and get two passwords and then input them into the computer. And then the, the barriers kind of close down so i'm just over here taking out all the different trainers getting all the xp on cast form and pelipper because again they're the two mons that i want i find the first password is best gym leader one and uh there goes the repel because those volcano mons were jumping at me left right and center i then figure out that i'm only seemingly going against grass type so i may as well just lead with cast form and just keep going for weather balls i then take out this person and the password is literally just password so the the worst two passwords really two or two passwords entered as you can see the coil sets have been disabled and they are offline so we can now fight the gym leader I do got a heal first though and uh, this gym's are really really cool you'll find out in a second it's it's not really something i was expecting but i kind of want them to do it more in like or, or just do it entirely in Pokemon games. I think it would be a really cool kind of feature. So just heal up my team. I'm feeling confident. The team's looking good. I've got a lot of ways around this uh, kind of gym leader with the grass and the fire types. So I got up to the gym leader. Really, really cool sprite. And he's talking about how the gym's in like really good harmony and stuff. And then he says, my brother and I will test your spirit. And this little kid just pops up out of nowhere. And it turns into a double battle instead of a single battle. I was like, bloody hell. That's actually really, really cool. And uh, I wasn't expecting it at all. And they lead with a Cherim and a Torkoal. So I lead with the Pelipper and the Cast Form. Obviously, the Sun's up. And this is like a perfect start for me now. Because I can just Weather Ball the um, Cherim, which I know I do outspeed my... 
Uh, I know I outspeed my own Pelipper, so I can do that. Weather Ball the Charon, which is absolutely fine. One shot that, and then my Pelipper can move, get the Rain Dance up to then kind of lower the Torkoal's kind of stats and everything uh, in terms of the fire moves it's going for. It goes for a fire spin, doesn't do much at all because of the rain. So that was a really, really cool move. Uh, from my part, I was quite happy about it. Literally couldn't have gone more perfect. And now I can weather ball against the Torkoal and start like taking that on stuff. She then brings in an Executor though, which I don't necessarily have anything for. I feel like I need to get the Torkoal out of the way first though, and I can just destroy that with a weather ball. There's no issues there. Absolutely one shot it, blow it back into 1942. And I probably should have gone for a wing attack, expecting me to, to destroy the Torkoal. He goes for the Psy Shock. I do go for the Water Pulse, hoping for a confusion. I do not get the confusion. The rain, of course, is still up. It's nice to have the rain to stop the chlorophyll and stuff, but then the Heliolisk comes in like it's like the game knows that you're gonna have a water type pokemon bringing in the rain so they, they they're just come like they're just ready for it and i'm like bro why do you have a heliolist there's no reason for you to do that so i go for a weather ball but they goes for the thunderbolt on cast form crits me obviously because crits just second nature in this game and now we're in a really bad spot because then the Executor goes for Magical Leaf and takes out my Pelipper. So now there's an Executor left and a Heliolisk. Obviously, I need to bring in my Golbat because that's something that I can just take out the Executor with. And then I'm also going to be bringing in my Venusaur as well. This thing does have Psy Shock, so I need to be a little bit careful about it. I then go for the Petal Dance. Obviously, you can't choose the target with Petal Dance, which is a little bit annoying. The Heliolisk goes for Charge, which I was really, really happy about. I go for the Petal Dance. Uh, it nearly takes out the Executor. Luckily, Golbat outspeeds it, and I do take it out with a wing attack so down goes the executor no issues after that really like the heliosk it's just on its own it's got thunderbolt which again isn't really going to do much to venusaur it does go for the thunderbolt on golbat and it does take my golbat out but uh, i can obviously just pedal dance the heliosk there's no problem there and i do absolutely obliterate it it destroys it with a cheeky crit like i say everybody getting crits in this game and that is the second gym leader down so i was really happy about that like it was a really good gym i really like the double kind of battle aspect of it gives me a heat rock as well and then after that, I'm thinking, okay, well, next up, i got I got to go to the Sandstorm kind of location, which I believe is north from the town. But then as soon as you exit, it does say that the part one of Pokemon Climate is now completed. So uh, unfortunately, you can't go take on the Sandstorm gym. Hopefully, they finish this off soon, though, and you can go and do it because I'm really, really excited to play the rest of this because it is a really, really cool fan game. And everything's going to be answered in part two. And then that is where it all ends. So thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please drop a like down below. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you're brand new. If you want to play the game, it will be linked in the description as always. And until next time, have a great day and peace.